Even if you are not into fashion, chances are that you must have heard about Chanel. Or better, you could not have avoided the two interlocking seas. Chanel is a global name, and its popularity as a brand didn't start today. Chanel is a favorite of A-list actors, celebrities, politicians, and the upper-class caliber. As of today, Chanel perfume, couture clothes, tweed suits, and luxury handbags have become a household name in high fashion. However, Chanel's journey to the top wasn't exactly a glamorous one. As a matter of fact, the only thing people find desirous about her journey will have to be the success of the brand. This is because the name Chanel has been used in the same sentence as promiscuity and even treachery. Perhaps it would be best to examine her story and how she created one of the world's most luxurious brands. This video is sponsored by Sky is the Limit. The woman who later became known as Coco Chanel was named Gabrielle Bonheur Chanel at birth. Contrary to popular opinion, the name Coco wasn't given to her by her birth parents. In fact, Chanel didn't adopt the nickname until she was much older. Chanel was born on August 19, 1883, in Saumur, France. Chanel wasn't at all born with a silver spoon. Right from when she was born, she started experiencing a life of hardship that continued until her youth. She was born to poor parents, and this meant they had no food most of the time, and going to school was a luxury that could only be dreamt of. There was no way Chanel could have dreamed of finding or owning an establishment where high-end clothes or fashion items would be sold, because as a child, her parents could not even afford to buy proper clothes. Somehow, Chanel must have been hopeful that their situation would improve, but it only got worse when her mother contracted an illness and died at the age of 32. Her father, too, did not do anything to enhance their living conditions because he was never at home. He was what people now call an absentee father. After the death of her mother, Chanel, who was just 11 at the time, had to grow up because her father couldn't be bothered anymore. He abandoned the family altogether. Subsequently, Chanel and her sisters were sent to the convent of the Sacred Heart in Aubazine, where she learned how to sew. And that was where her life career started taking form. In 1901, when Chanel clocked 18, she left the convent and worked as a seamstress and sales assistant in Moulins. But more importantly, she sang in cabarets, where she earned the nickname Coco. At first, it was just a few who called her that, but after a while, others saw how easy it was to pronounce Coco instead of Gabrielle, which was her real name, and went with Coco. Being a young woman with an exquisite body, she caught the attention of many men who either wanted her as a wife or mistress because they already had a wife. Eventually, Chanel became the mistress of Etienne Balsam, a wealthy ex-cavalry officer. It always baffled those who knew her. They just couldn't understand why she chose to be a mistress when she could have taken the hands of men who wanted her for a wife. However, the silent and unanswered question soon got an answer. Chanel's relationship with Balsan allowed her to mingle with the French elite. Balsan housed her in one of his mansions and never held back on splurging the finest of clothes and pearls on her. However, Coco was not blinded by all the good things that her lover could give her. She knew what she wanted out of life and went for it. Even as Balsan's mistress, she made good use of her experience as a seamstress and started designing hats, which she sold to the clientele she had made by her association. By the year 1908, she moved on to have an affair with one of Balsan's friends, called Author Boy Kappel. One could ask why she chose to be in a relationship with Kappel. In later years, she said in an interview that two young men were outbidding themselves for her little hot body. It would seem she was getting a kick out of being desired by men of high social status. So, how did she start the Chanel brand? We'll get there shortly, but before we get there, let me ask you this. Have you heard about Sky is the Limit? It's a luxury fashion brand that produces exclusive, high quality, and super unique sneakers. Check in the description section below for the link. Having said that, let's go into the next chapter. While Chanel was enjoying the affection of her lover, Chanel never stopped making hats. 
The more she made hats, the more her customers increased. And before long, she started feeling the need to do more than hats, since she had the finance and customers. Chanel, in 1910, opened her first hat boutique in Paris. She called it Chanel Modes. As can be imagined, it was financed by her lover, Arthur Boy Capel. Having opened her very own boutique, she doubled down on her effort to make simple yet elegant hat designs that quickly gained popularity. By 1913, she expanded to Deauville, where she sold other fashion items other than hats. She started making women's luxury sportswear that she made from Jersey, a kind of fabric that was previously used for men's underwear. This was quite groundbreaking as no one had thought of such brilliance in fashion before. Her designs were easy to wear, comfortable, and simple. If anything, it was a well-anticipated break in an era dominated by stiff and complicated garments. Chanel's unique designs gained widespread acclaim, and in 1915, Harper's Bazaar praised Chanel by openly declaring that a woman without Chanel was hopelessly out of fashion. By 1916, she had opened a couture house in Biarritz and employed 300 workers. Her first couture collection comprised simple, boxy designs that emphasized comfort. In 1918, Chanel purchased the building at 31 Rue Combal. The area at the time was one of the most fashionable districts of Paris. In 1921, she opened an early incarnation of a fashion house where she sold hats, clothing, and accessories. Later, when she saw how well her brand was doing, she expanded to offer jewelry and fragrances. Chanel was known for drawing inspiration from her personal experiences. In 1919, the tragic death of her lover, Arthur Capel, in a car accident deeply affected her. During her mourning period, she exclusively wore black attire. Surprisingly, this period of grief became the catalyst for her iconic creation, the little black dress that she introduced in 1926. Vogue hailed it as the Chanel Ford, symbolizing its universal appeal and timeless elegance. Pretty impressive, right? In 1921, Gabrielle introduced Chanel No. 5, a perfume she created with perfumer Ernest Beau. Of course, there had been lots of perfumes before that period, but one of the things that made Chanel No. 5 stand out among the rest was its unique bottle design and luxurious scent. Soon after its launch, a lot of people wanted their hands on the elite performance. Chanel wanted it to be the most expensive perfume in the world, and best believe it, she achieved this goal. Although there were disputes over profits with the Bertheimer brothers, who financed its making, Chanel No. 5 became a massive success. Not only did it become popular among signature perfume lovers, but the introduction of Chanel No. 5 in 1921 further established the brand's status. Well, here's the thing. It is one thing for a product to be associated with luxury, but when it becomes endorsed by a renowned celebrity, it becomes a product in its own class. That was exactly what happened to the Chanel No. 5. It was famously endorsed by Marilyn Monroe, who proclaimed that what she wore to bed was nothing but a few drops of Chanel No. 5. In the 1930s, Chanel tried her hands in costume jewelry. To do this, she recruited craftsmen to create collections that blended real and faux gems. Chanel didn't stop here. She made her way into Hollywood, where she designed costumes for films. When Chanel was interviewed by Collier's Magazine in 1932, she said that she only wanted to visit Hollywood to see what the pictures had to offer her and what she could do in return for it. Some of the designs made by Chanel were worn by actress Gloria Swanson in Tonight or Never, a film released um, 1931. Another actress who wore Chanel's design was Ina Clare in the movie. The Greeks has a word for them in 1932. Unfortunately, this Hollywood move didn't turn out the way she had anticipated. Chanel would later confess that she didn't like it in Hollywood. It appeared her designs were not popular with the actors. But in her defense, Chanel believed Hollywood was too vulgar for her creation.
During World War II, Chanel closed most of her shops. At first, this looked like a noble thing to do. However, the opposite was the case. People soon realized she closed down her shops to relieve thousands of employees of their duties. In case you are wondering why she had to do this, she did because many of the workers clamored for more wages some years before the war. Looking at it critically, she had been waiting for the perfect time to get her pound of flesh. After closing down her shops, she moved into the Hotel Ritz in Paris, where she had an affair with a German officer, Hans Gunther von Dinklage. Her association with the Nazis, including attempts to reclaim full ownership of Parfums Chanel from the Jewish Wertheimer family, led to her arrest after the war. However, she was released without charges because of the intervention of Winston Churchill, who happened to be an old friend. After her release, there were too many accusations and controversies surrounding her and her business. It was so bad that many people started calling for a boycott of her product. This was a little too much to bear. Chanel had closed her couture house and spent the war years in exile. Throughout the 1960s, Chanel was a well-known name in fashion. She had celebrities like Romy Schneider, Jane Fonda, and Jackie Kennedy wearing Chanel fashion items. The Chanel brand became more popular as celebrities wore their products on fashion shows and runways. Chanel died in 1971. After her death, the brand's future became quite uncertain. No, it wasn't like the brand had no one to manage it. Yvonne Dudel, Jean Casaubon, and Philippe Guy Bourget took over the design responsibilities. But their efforts lacked the consistency and innovation that made Chanel stand out when it started out. The brand struggled with maintaining its identity, and that led to a decline in popularity. By the early 1980s, Chanel's accessories, cosmetics, and fragrances were the only segments bringing in the money. Thankfully, when Lagerfeld took over, Chanel expanded its product lines and reached new markets. The introduction of the J12 watch in 1999 and the first cruise collection in 2000 showed the brand's creativity. Celebrities like Nicole Kidman and Kate Moss signed ambassadorial deals for Chanel's fragrances. This further made them accepted globally. Also, under Lagerfeld's direction, Chanel started an inclusive line that appealed to younger generations while still maintaining its values of luxury and elegance. The Chanel brand has been around for over a century, but that has not stopped it from being at the top of their game. Between 2017 and 2023, the brand grew by 27%. In 2023 alone, the Chanel brand recouped approximately $19.4 billion, which was an increase from what it recorded in 2022. Chanel, as of today, is situated in neuilly sur seine France, where they produce high fashion clothing and luxury accessories. And guess what? Despite the many fashion companies like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Hermes, the Chanel brand is still one of the most valuable luxury brands in the world. What do you think about Chanel as a person and as a brand? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like the video, do well to like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, sky is the limit.